So I have a bit of a confession to make. I don't like this boat anymore. For example, I hate the cover. I hate these nozzles. I hate the crappy sealant that I use. But mostly, I hate how complicated it is. I feel like every single time I go to work on it, I have to fix 10 things. And all of this led me to basically shelving the project and not touching it for around a year. And none of that's to mention all the errors and problems that I had when I gave it a test for the first time last year. I think I can do a lot better than this. So I think I'm gonna give this thing a makeover. So here's me removing pretty much everything from the boat. I got rid of the relay box, I got rid of all the servos from the back, and I got rid of all the other unnecessary crap. And that includes the nozzles from the back. Once that was done, I felt like I took a huge dump. Everything was gone, and I felt like I could finally get back to work. And these are all the wires that I removed. Pretty ridiculous if you ask me. So the first thing that I wanted to get working on was the top cover. I came up with a three-piece system that I could actually 3D print so that the dimensions would be correct that used two smaller windows that I could cut out on my CNC machine. So this was actually my first time touching SolidWorks CAM. Normally I use Fusion 360. And once I worked through the differences between the two programs, I was able to actually generate a pretty good toolpath. And for this simple contour cut, I used a three millimeter single flute upcut end mill. I find that this usually works the best for extruded acrylic. I sent it over to my laptop and tried cutting it out on my machine. And besides the fact that it sounded like a dying cat during the machining process, it actually turned out pretty good. So then once I was done with that, I machined another one and then put the whole thing together. And I also added some TPU strips. Now I'm under no illusion that this will be waterproof, but at least it'll help a little bit. So that was the first problem solved. The old cover looks like crap compared to this new one. Uh, the new one fits significantly better and I think looks a lot better as well. So now that that first thing is done, I'm going to move on to improve the performance. So the worst part about the boat currently is the fact that it's slow as hell. So what I wanted to do was optimize the impeller and nozzle setup using my DIY flow rate tester. But it seems that no matter how many times I try, I just can't get usable data out of the system. So after much deliberation, I think I'm actually gonna go back to using a force-based testing method. Now, I was actually planning on calculating the force with the old setup as well, but I was never able to get any good data out of that system. So I think I'm gonna go back to using a load cell, which is good because I'll be able to get data directly. So I'd actually tried this in the past with this horrendous looking test jig and it never worked very well. But now I'm older and wiser and I think I have a better solution. So this was my first prototype of Tester 2.0. The Arduino is in the box. I have a load cell mounted to the wall using VHB tape. And then I have some mechanics wire that connects to the back of the boat on a part I call the hitch. And then I have the Arduino hooked up to the boat and it runs through a program. Then all of this data is reported back to my computer where I'm given throttle percentage and force. Through very scientific means, I had determined that it would not unstick from the wall. And I also determined that I still needed O-rings on the nozzles. Oh, also the rampy side of the bathtub, no bueno, shoots water everywhere. So after printing another set of nozzles that had O-rings, I gave it another try. And this is where I learned that my hitch design wasn't very good. Attempt number four, I wised up a little bit and I put the lid on to try to keep some of the water out. But this one had its own set of interesting things happen. So yeah, turns out my scientific method wasn't very good. Okay. My solution to the unsticking problem was to just double up the surface area. Makes sense, right? I also switched to only using a single jet. And then later on, I also switched to using cord instead of the mechanics wire. After spending a few very long nights tweaking and testing the code, I finally got some good data. And so I think it's time to test a few impeller iterations. So first up to the mark is this very typical two-bladed impeller that I was using before. I figured I might as well give that a try. So I'll spare you from going through every single test and I'll just let you know the general procedure. So I turn the boat on and put it in the water and then I hook up the hitch. I connect the Arduino to the computer and run the program. It runs a quick priming sequence on the pump and it tears the scale 
and it runs through three iterations of throttle tests going from 0 to 100. And between each test, the scale retears, hence me holding the boat. So this is how that data looks. I certainly wouldn't write a master's thesis on it, but it's not too bad for the purposes of what I'm doing. So the biggest issue I see is the waviness at the top of the impeller curve. My hypothesis on why this happens is the backsplash causes the boat to jump up and down a little bit, which reduces the net positive suction head on the pumps, and that reduces the power a little bit. So while that's not ideal, uh, if you average out the, all the runs from that test, you can see that the data looks pretty usable. And we can see that the actual max average from the entire run was 16.78 newtons. Now a technology that I wanted to get into for a while is resin 3D printing. And since it was Amazon Prime Day, I decided to pick myself up a printer. And after I uh, modified my shelves so that it would fit, I was ready to try a few designs that were printed in resin. So the main reason I wanted to do this was that resin actually has a much higher surface quality right off of the printer and also higher dimensional accuracy, which in turn should reduce the drag and increase the net thrust. So I gave this same two-bladed simple impeller a try just to see if we could compare FDM printing and resin printing. So as you can see here, the resin print did perform ever so slightly better than the FDM print. Now this definitely could be down to the margin of error, but the resin impeller showed that it performed about a newton higher at 17.86 newtons. Now this could just be from the inaccuracy of the test, but since it's easier to actually print them out of resin anyways, I'll probably print all impellers in the future out of resin. So that being said, I tried out a few different designs. The first one looked a bit more like a propeller. The next one was a similar design, but had a much higher pitch. And then the third one was the same as the second design, but had three blades. And as you can see by this master comparison, all of the impellers that were two bladed performed very similar, but the three bladed impeller performed significantly worse than all of the other ones. All of the impellers that are marked with an R are the impellers that were actually printed out of resin. Now I think I can actually do a little bit better than this, so it was time to test a few more designs. So the next ones on test were these that featured a NACA 4415 airfoil profile, and then these other ones that were very close to the current leading design just with a few changes. So the NACA airfoil ones actually ended up being a little bit too thin at the root of the blade and broke on test, which looked something like this. So once I added the data for all of these, including averaging the tests where the impellers actually survived, we got these impeller curves. So all of the two-bladed impellers performed very similar, the three-bladed impeller performed slightly worse, and then the four-bladed impeller didn't perform good at all. Not exactly sure why. So our current leader, and just by a hair, is actually the original impeller design, which is fun. So basically I wasted all my time. And before I managed to get any more tests in, all of the fastening hardware for the nozzles decided it was going to rip its way out. And despite my best efforts with JB Weld, this was pretty much not fixable. So I decided that it was time to retire this hull. It had done me well, but it was kind of a piece of crap and was falling apart. This also gave me a chance to actually fix up a few of the other things that I didn't really like about it. For example, I increased the size of the jet inlets by a lot and moved the jets farther outboard. Another thing I did is that I moved to larger 5mm M3 threaded inserts, which I hope will stick into the material a little bit better. And besides a few mistakes where I forgot to increase the material thickness to account for the longer inserts, so I had a few holes, the print turned out pretty well. And this also caused some nipples on the second stage. Oopsie doopsie. Luckily though, I was able to fix this just by sanding them down, so I sanded off the boat's nips which turned out to be okay. Doesn't look great, but it'll do. And then I repeated the same epoxy method for attaching all of the sections as I did for the previous boat. After sanding the entire hull this time to rough up the surface, it was time for five light coats of Flex Seal. And after that, I gave the bottom a spray with this beautiful turquoise color, just to give it a bit of accent and to cover up my boo-boos from earlier. Another big change that I was doing for this version of the boat was that I was switching to using two brushless motor drives. So these are 3660 Rocket RC motors uh, connected to 90 amp speed controllers. And I also decided that I was going to try to operate the boat just using differential thrust steering, just to try to simplify it a bunch, and we'll see how that goes later on. 
and I will spare you the whole process of assembly and I'll just bring you through the highlights. So these new motors are completely water cooled as well so that eliminates the need for openings on the top cover and for fans which is really nice. I also removed all of the other servos that were there and we just have the two pitching servos remaining and I'm running it on two 3S LiPo packs. Now, as mentioned earlier, out of all the impellers tested, impeller 4.0 was the winner. So I printed out a few of those for the boat to give it a try. And of course, these were the winning combination on the last boat haul with the last motors. So for this one, we'll actually have to do another deep dive, but I'm planning on doing that in a video in the future. I also wanted to test nozzles, but I didn't get the chance to. So that will be another part in the future. For now, I'm just going to use the standard 28 millimeter nozzle that I was using for the testing before. So without further ado, I will give you a brief glimpse of the first test. So during this first test clip, I tried to turn left and one of the impellers ran at full speed due to the differential steering. And then the actual impeller exploded. And because of how short my antenna was, I lost all communication with the boat. I think an impeller exploded. Yeah, I brought extras. So we went and chased it down with the boat that I was on during that test that day. So after a quick impeller swap, we were ready to give it another try. And with the power of foresight, I actually thought about this happening and printed out some thicker impellers. So I decided to put those in instead. And after this, it was time to go in the water again. And this is where I discovered that the differential steering wasn't very good. I was able to do about a 30 foot radius turn. And the other issue was that the transmitter didn't have enough range, which would often result in hilarious effect. Alright. See, so I'm gonna drive over there and then it's gonna be out of range. Okay. Ah, it's out of range. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Woo! Okay, I got it, I got it. <laughs> but once we drove with it so that I was able to maintain radio range, I was fairly happy with the performance. And I wanted to see what else I could do. <laughs> All right, that's not enough power. Okay, I don't really know what I was thinking, but that cleaned out my sinus is really good. And using the power of quick overnight prototyping, I developed the second stage to the nozzles that would allow for steering. And then I switched to using only a single servo for the pitching and for the steering. I also took the time to extend the antenna using just some spare wire that I had laying around. This gave me a significant amount of range. <laughs> so I had to do some finicking around with the transmitter to unreverse the steering and I also actually managed to explode another impeller so I guess that the thickness didn't really help. Not sure exactly what's going on there but I'll have to explore that in a future video. But on the bright side the steering seemed to be significantly better than the day before and so was the range so it was time for a final day of testing. So free flight test. So the pitching is working, that's working, we have motor power. It all looks pretty good, so I'm going to throw it in the water and let's see how it does. Good luck. Give it a bit higher throttle. So here's a clip with the nozzles trimmed all the way up to the top. And then the same clip but with the nozzles trimmed all the way down. Okay, here's a full throttle test. That's Sam definitely leaving some performance on the table. Alright. Thank you. 
So overall, I'd say I'm definitely pretty happy with the performance, especially with the maneuverability, and I'm fairly happy with the top speed as well. Now, I think that we're leaving quite a bit of performance on the table with these new motors, since I hadn't tuned the impellers at all for this specific use case. So I definitely think that a future video is going to be us just exploring different impellers and different nozzle sizes so that I get maximum performance out of the setup. As well, I think I'm going to add a GPS speedometer so that I can easily keep track of the speed. I'm not 100% sure what the top speed is currently, but I think it's somewhere around 25 to 30 kilometers per hour. Okay, so, um, well, I thought on that drone shot there that you can probably see, I thought that I blew up an impeller, but I actually, oh, I did blow up an impeller. So the weeds are going around it, now I only have one blade on this one impeller. This one looks like it survived, yeah. The thicker bladed impeller did survive the carnage, but um, it looks like, uh, it looks like this one didn't, so I think that's probably the wrap for the day. And um, I think I gotta go do some slight modifications to those impellers and some more testing now with the new motors, they're a lot more powerful. And I also want to fix up these steering mechanisms and stuff like that too to make that the way that I want it. But not too bad for a first test. And I think I'll probably do one more video in this series and we'll go through and make some really good impellers for it. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.